All right. About three years ago, I did a video where I had um, solar panels this size. They were 250 watt polys mounted on the back wall from here all the way across. And I'm getting a lot of views on that as uh, for solar panel placement. Now, this is the north side of the property. This is the south side of the property. So this is the southern sky. In the wintertime, the sun will come up over here. It'll come up, it'll be blocked by the house, and it'll be coming back and settling over there. In the summertime, this is north, but true north is around here. So right now, the sun's like over here, but the sun is already in May, like May 4th, May 5th. It's, it starts up behind the wall. It comes up at a higher angle up here. The house doesn't shade anything anymore. And then it comes back and settles on the west side behind the wall again when it's, the sun goes down. <coughs> so right now, with this, these are running that uh, EG4 12,000 BTU direct solar input mini split. And they're, they're doing fine. Um, I have 12 100-watt grape solar panels in series, and they run that thing all day long. Uh, usually today's going to be cloudy all day, but usually around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, I can start it up. I have enough sun on these solar panels to be able to start it up. But the uh, solar panels that I used to have on the wall are now on this array here. And I built a uh, solar array out of pressure-treated 2x4s. And it cost me about $150 for each solar array to hold eight solar panels, 330-watt solar panels. So that was including the screws. So I was able to build this. And as where I'd only be able to get two solar panels in between each one of these pillars, I can now get four solar panels in the same amount of space. So I used to only get one there, one there. Now I can get four solar panels at a 35 degree angle and another four. So I only had four between this one and that one. I would only have four, now I have eight. So I have this, all these in series. They go like this and like that. And you have the, um, the positive comes out of this solar panel and the negative is out of that one. So the negative, and it goes all the way around to where this is the positive coming out of here. So, um, so then this runs along here and goes over to this solar array over here. And here's another eight solar panels in series. And they're in series like that, they go those four and then come back on this. So then they will actually parallel behind this one and I only have a positive and negative wire running back into the garage. Now, when I had these solar panels, these bigger ones on the back wall, I couldn't fit as many. And when the summertime hit, the, the sun over there right now, is like I said, it, it starts out behind this wall, comes up and it's right up around here and it settles back on the west side behind the wall. But in the summertime in uh, July and August, that sun will be back there and it will be right above, right above the solar panels at a 90 degree so there's no direct sun on these solar panels on this back wall. But being on this 35 degree ground mount array that I did, it'll get full sun. It'll be the same as when the sun is in the winter time over here. Um, these are actually in sun all winter. So the sun just barely keeps above this roof line here in the, in the winter, I mean, and I'll get full sun on these. So it doesn't matter whether it's summer or winter, I get full sun. But these mounted on that back wall 
are useless in the middle of the summer in July and August. So they're working great the other 10 months, but they don't produce enough in July and August for me. So I've had a lot of views on that. For the last two, three months, that's been the majority of the views is a solar panel placement on this wall. And, you know, before I had that solar array from this pergola over there and this one over here, and even that 24 panel solar array on the west wall over there, I was having a trouble getting um, enough solar to recharge my batteries in the wintertime. So I ended up taking them off the wall and putting them over here. So I get some comments on this and the solar panels on the back wall. And what's really funny is you can see how close the solar array is to this, but the sun is actually high enough where this solar panel does not shade that one at all. And the garden doesn't shade it. These get full sun because the sun's kind of at an angle like this. So, but in the winter time, the sun would be like this, and it would, they a lot of them would be shaded. So, much better off doing something like this. And like I said, I have eight solar panels on here. It cost me like $150 at Home Depot to get the pressure treated 10 foot two by fours and the deck screws and put this together and then put the clamps on there to hold those. So, it wasn't bad at all. And this has worked fantastic, so much better than on the back wall. But I was testing that back wall and, you know, in the wintertime, now out here in Arizona, in our wintertime, we can still get where it's warm. And actually those are running my mini split in my garage and that sun's on the garage door um, and on the walls of the garage most of the day in the wintertime. So, I still run my mini split when it's like 80, 85 degrees in the winter out there in the garage to cool down the garage. But, uh, you know, we do get that March, we were in the 90s. <laughs> so, I mean, we weren't even, it wasn't even spring, March 20th, spring yet, and we were already in the 90s. So it was warm. But anyways, if you're thinking about doing something on that back wall, like I said, that's our north side of the property, and this faces south. So these panels um, face directly towards the south. Now, if you were to do something with this where you wanted to put them on the back wall and you had those come up at like a 35 degree angle away from the wall, then you could use those year round. You wouldn't have to worry about it, but you would need to pull them off that wall by maybe a 25 to 35 degree angle. And you'd have to check for yourself which one's better, 25 or 35. But then I could use those year round if I wanted to. Um, but the... Uh, you know, these would be a better angle in the wintertime for nine months. And then in the summertime, the 25 to 35 degree angle like this would be much better. So if I just put something behind there um, to hold this at like a 25 to 35 degree angle, I could leave those on the wall and they work great for me in the summertime in July and August. So just want to do a little uh, video on that. Um, Everyone really seems interested in wanting to do that. And um, honestly, I I just use um, L brackets up here. There's L brackets. And then I just use self-tapping screws here that go right into this. And um, I've had no problems with this. Now, if you live in a really, really windy area, um, you might have to do something with the bottom. But these are up against the wall so tight and there's really no way for the wind. I've never had a problem with any of these blowing away from the wall when it's really, even when we get 60, 70 mile an hour gust, I don't have any problems with this. So you have to figure out what works for you. But it's just, you know, a way that uh, you can, uh, if you're tight on space, that uh, 
you could utilize those. So I'm going to think about leaving those there and moving them 25 to 35 degrees off the wall. Now, if I do that, the wind will be able to get behind there. And that's the monsoon. So that's when we get our really bad storms is in July and August. So I got to kind of think about that. I would have to really mount those to where that solar panel didn't move at all. But that's it. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me. And uh, I'll leave links in the description for the products that I use. Have a truly wonderful and extremely blessed remainder of 2025.